Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I am Pat McCullough and today we're going to discuss how to extricate a victim from an auger ent uh, entanglement and some of the hazards that go along with it. This auger's job is a, to take a product and move it. It does not care if that product is grain uh, of any form, your arm or your leg. It's going to take that product and it's going to move it. When we cut an auger open, there's a rule of thumb. We, we cut the auger open a time and a half the distance of where somebody is caught. Because that auger will do enough ripping, shredding, and tearing of that limb to make the distance a time and a half longer than it normally is. So for instance, from my fingertips to my elbow, time and a half longer is how far we're going to cut this auger open. That we would hate to go and not cut this auger open far enough and cut, out, cut this auger open and have my hand still stuck up in there another four to five inches and not be able to get them out. So we make sure we cut this open far enough the first time because once we open this up, that this patient's going to be going in the shock um, from the blood loss. So we want to make sure when we cut this open that they get out in a timely fashion. When we cut this auger, we cut starting from the top and we work towards our patient. We're going to go from the top across here as I'm drawing this line. We draw, cut this first and then we're going to split this auger open down to our patient reason for doing this is we cut this here and we open this up and we're going to spread it wide open. Now as they cut this auger open, we have a couple of firefighters here that are going to come in, they're going to cut this. I want you to pay very close attention. As they cut down here at the very bottom, that very last quarter to a half inch, when that auger gets cut, it's going to pop open. And that's going to release pressure that this auger has been acting as its own tourniquet. It's going to release that pressure and they're going to start bleeding severely. So we're going to go and do that last to help the patient from bleeding out any faster. That, so we spread this open and then we need to remove this auger in a very timely fashion. Now as this cut is happening, I want you to pay very close attention to the very bottom of this cut with the tubular steel pops open and it releases that pressure. So as you can see, our firefighters came in here. They cut this open, used the hydraulic spreaders to spread this open so we can see what we have for injuries and where we have to cut this auger to remove it. Also, they came in with the spreaders. They crushed this down. This eliminates the auger from being able to slide back down or corkscrew backwards from product weight that's already in this auger. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna cut this auger, never wanting to unwind this auger to get the patient's arm out that will create a whole new series of cuts and breaks and double the injury. So we're gonna cut this auger starting on the flighting on the top to the shaft. If we start from the shaft going down towards the bottom of the auger, it's very difficult in that very small amount of space. We have more space here, so we're gonna have them guys come in. They're gonna cut this auger. We're gonna remove this, get the patient on the backboard into a level one trauma center.
So as you can see here, we've got our patient extricated and on the way to the hospital now. I'm Pat McCall and thanks for watching Training Minutes.